right, no problem. Let's uh, call the meeting order. We rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I'll call the order, uh, the meeting to order, we're in Mecklenburg District, August 19th at uh, 5, 10 p.m. And the uh, first item on the agenda is financial review with Michelle Holt. We had our preliminary audit field work um, last month and that went well and they're coming back Wednesday for the full three days um, for the rest of the field work and we're pretty well prepared for that we've been using Dropbox with them and they've been actually working on it um, as we've gone along the last few weeks so we'll have um, an update following the audit and our goal for this year is to have final papers um, by November um, even possibly by the end of October. And who's doing the audit? Plaza and Sanderson. It is okay. the same firm. So this will be their third year with us. Okay. Um, as far as the June financials, they're obviously still in draft form, but there was the item of the revenues seemed off from the billing, and we went back and reviewed, and what we discovered was that the system hadn't prorated the meter hydrant and sprinkler charges. So I pulled the reports by cycle so for the people who would have normally gotten the bill July 10th for the prior three months, that stayed in the system in full. Those that were out one and two months, we backed out one third and two thirds for the portion that belonged to FY20. Um, so it's about an $88,000 entry, but we still did make our revenues, but just by about 73,000. So we, we still did make the budget for revenues. And the July and August financials will be combining and reviewing at the September meeting. I was going to ask because I don't recall getting any this time. No, no. But with the year end in audit, we usually just try to combine those and we'll, we'll go with them in September. Okay. Um, and we should have a good update from the auditors by then as well. Um, the other item that we had sent along was the delegation of the payroll approval process. I've updated that just to fine tune it as far as how things have really <coughs> fallen into place as we've gone through doing this process and also added allowing the approvals that we have which is a combination of Ron a superintendent Jill as business manager and myself as finance director two of us always cross check each other we do the submission with two and then usually that will be Jill completing it, I review, we submit, and then we get the reports back, I review, and then Ron reviews and signs off. And we send them to uh, Kathy, our treasurer, and she approves with the bank balance reports um, and a review of the reports, the payroll reports also I send to her, and she approves them. So at that point, we had spoken about this in November, but we hadn't gotten around to getting the paperwork uh, together and finalizing. Um, a, vote to proceed with having the authorization that we get for payroll each week allow us to forward the 457 the New Hampshire retirement and now we have added on FSA to forward those contributions uh, number one for the dependent care contributions employees can't draw on them till they're actually in the account FSA there's flexibility um, but for those they need to be available and forwarded from us and the 457 our people's retirement investment account so the sooner we can get that in even with the rates of what they are <laughs> it's better for the employees the New Hampshire retirement doesn't allow for submission until the end of the month um, but if we have that weekly <coughs> approval we can just proceed with that and then forward that via ACH so we'll do the weekly ACHs for the 457 and the flexible spending and dependent care accounts and then do the New Hampshire retirement at the end of the month. When we bring the AP, I would still bring that all for review. And we always have it in-house if anyone wanted to see that. But it would just make it 
easier for us because especially with the flexible spending account now we would actually have to be seeking approvals every every week so does anyone have any questions or thoughts on the process so what exactly if you can just kind of go through summarizing briefly what is the change here that is different than what's in, in place now what I did was update how some of the roles are actually occurring now that we've been doing the practice so I just got very a little bit more All specific right. mm -hmm. um, and then the only thing that we added was allowing the weekly approval of payroll to also include the 457 New Hampshire retirement um, and the FSA contributions being forwarded. Um, at some point, we could also work with the payroll company for them to actually do that for us. We just haven't gotten there yet. Um, the New Hampshire retirement's a bit more involved as far as setting up the file with New Hampshire retirement for transmission, um, but that is something we'd like to look look for too. Usually with the cash requirements for payroll, I would back those out and just ask for approval for the net pay that was being paid in payroll taxes. Um, but we would pay the others directly through AP, so they were being approved through the AP process. Okay. I've seen in the past for <coughs> payroll approval um, forms a um, trending of the last 12 rolling months. So a rolling trending of the last 12 months. So let's say this is the payroll oh, sure. approval for, let's say, end of July, then I would say until last year's end of July. Um, you know, and then in mid June, mid-August I would only see until mid-August of last year and I found that very informative for whoever signs off on that because you see trends you know some months are a little higher some months are a little lower because mm -hmm. you have you know bonus payouts and you know stuff like that or some some months where you know just year end yeah, it's where nice the weeks fall you have the five week months right it's, it's kind of nice to see that because not everybody has the run rates in the head right mm -hmm. so if you have that that trending in front of you it's very nice as a kind of sanity check yeah this looks this looks healthy I'm fine because let's face it we don't have time to, to review the records in detail right mm -hmm. but it's not a requirement but it's something I've seen a couple of companies do and I found it found it very helpful so okay. no, I could definitely maybe more for you guys on the managerial level too mm -hmm. yeah I could definitely incorporate that because we do a review that obviously all employees are current and active um, I know the rates in my head, so I can run through and kind of check that nothing happened right. with the rates. We check the overtime, we check the overall hours, uh, the grand total of hours we match from the timesheets to the final reports, mm -hmm. um, and that's where we sign off. Um, I don't know if it's if it's a lot of work or not, but it could be yeah. it could be a nice little feature. Oh, that's a great yeah, idea. we can definitely incorporate that. That's not a problem. All right. So, do you need a motion from us, or just to go ahead and sign this? we can just for the approval of a process do we need a motion or just simply yeah let's the sign off make it official that's yeah, okay official. all right anybody care to pr propose a motion for um, adopting the new authorization for delegation of payroll approval process so move second it moved by Joe second by Ken any other questions, discussion? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, carries four zero zero. So we're all set there. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we are postponing the credit card policy until the next meeting, I believe. Yes, okay. right, we had tabled that until September. Okay, fine. Thanks, Michelle. Sure. You bet. Thank you. So I guess we can sign this one. Got it. Mm -hmm. So next on the agenda is um, Board of Commissioners to discuss capital projects with uh, Underwood engineers. So you have the floor. <laughs> Come on up. There's no procedure. Don't be afraid. We call this the hot seat. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, let me introduce Tim Poles, who I think Ron knows and Jill knows, who's been working on the two Turkey Hill booster pump station design. Uh, oh, good. So he can answer questions on that better better than I can. 
Um, you just have updates, so you have no particular order to to what? Uh, no, it just says here Wells 7 and 8, Wells 4 and 5, Wells 2 and 3, and a Turkey Hill Booster. Okay. In the packet, I didn't see too much under Wells 2 and 3, so... Right, there's not a whole have, lot there. I don't care right. what order you want to go, if you want to yeah. do... Seven and eight first. Well, you might as well start with the Turkey Hill booster, okay, and sure. then I can turn you loose if you want when we get That's into some idea. of the other stuff. Okay, That's fine. Um, yeah, that works. So, and, and I'll just start by saying um, I, I know I'm, I, I know we included a uh, construction services contract uh, for the Turkey Hill booster station, so I think that was in the packet. And and then um, I don't know if there are any particular questions on that um, or Tim if you had anything that you wanted to go over or if you guys had questions about the project or schedule so you'd be looking for us to take action on this this evening and kick, kick that work off basically right the construction services right yes okay. uh, at least review yeah. it and you know have it in front of you and then you know you can get back to us soon but right now the project is out for approval from the state um, they have it now uh, we've internally reviewed our project manual and the plans and we had a few adjustments changes here and there relatively minor and we're just waiting for the comments back from DES okay. so that's the, where we're at um, I did look through the uh, the other proposal in here August 15th Turkey Hill booster pumping station. Um, the full amount is $132,000. And um, on page two under task number seven, uh, there's a bullet item that says it is also assumed that the um, the RPR, what is that, resident project representative? Representative. Yes. Yep at Wells 4 and 5 will be supporting this project as the lead? Yes. Correct. What exactly does that mean? So that means we are going to, have, so the resident project representative is what in the old days was called an inspector, and I don't know if you get into this in your realm of things, but inspector is a bad term in terms of our insurance company. Right. They call it construction observation yeah. or resident project representative. But we're thinking that the, that the RPR for the Wells 4 and 5 project can cover Oh, all right. The That's Turkey what I was Hill wondering. Booster Project. Yeah, just trying to economize on on one guy, you know, yeah. be, being down here. You know, so okay. you had before when we did the well um, seven and eight water treatment plant. That was Bob Daigle full time on that plant. If um, you know, certainly you need to be there all the time. But there are times when you can break away. You know, and and something like a booster station. You know, it can be a part time basis. You can go see what's going on. You can come back and, and see what's going on. So. We see him dividing time between the two. Good. And I have the, that person also to talk about, which is which is in my list of things. But um. Okay. Good. That's really the only question I had on this proposal. So I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Given the experience of the last booster station and spraying the panel and being down for a couple of weeks. A week. Remember? Yes. Have we taken measure that this doesn't happen here? Is there like a screen in between, you know, a curtain of some sort, a curtain of some sort, or like at least a somewhat, you know, splash water? Okay, I can't answer that question. I wasn't that real familiar. Yeah, with what? What's, what's the issue, Ron? We had a not in the not in the pen check, the one away booster. It's the the old one the, being the, replaced. The old yes, one. one we're replacing. Mm -hmm. We actually had a. Uh, we had a leak and it sprayed into the panel, shorted out the panel. Yeah. And we were down for, uh, one was down, uh, one of the motors was down for a week or so, a couple of weeks, and one of them we were able to get back up. Yeah. I think we then paid rent for an intermediate pump or something like that. Right. It, right. So to have redundancy, yeah. Right. And, um, so, so one could, was, we got back up relatively quick, but the other one was still down. So we, we yeah, we did at least a uh, pump for redundancy, but. I know that was something that we had talked about, mm -hmm. um, was having some sort of petition so that the SCADA panel isn't right next to any, any water source or something like that. Right. I, I would offer for <clears throat> consideration, I, what I've seen in pump stations is um, sort of like a curtain of vertical, it's almost like vertical blinds of plastic mm -hmm. 
that you can walk through. I know what you mean. Yeah. But when it yep. sprays, yep. it'll block the spray of the water. Mm -hmm. So if, if a full walled partition is something that would present a little bit more of an obstacle, maybe something else like in that, with some kind of a curtain or something would be. Depends on the pressure, really. I mean, yeah. yeah. So. But it would be nice not to repeat that situation. Right, right. Kind of learn if it's that, a yeah. simple matter of putting up a piece of sheet metal in between, you know, or some screening or, right. Yeah, we had discussed that a that. little bit at the last meeting. We talked about like the freezer strips, I think is, is that what yeah, you're yeah, referring exactly. to? Yeah, I don't, know. Like, I don't know what they were called. I just saw yeah. them in place yeah. one time. Yeah. We see them like in right. a supermarket yeah. or something right. going in and out of a freezer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, we talked a little bit about that and those can be purchased. Um, we didn't put it into the into the design, but we could um, we could include it, and it doesn't take up a lot of space, okay. and it's something that could be moved aside. Right, right so it wouldn't conflict easily. with setbacks to yeah. electrical work and things like that. If right. it's sort right. of a removable piece, you know. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's a good point. And really, going forward, that's something we should be making a standard in our projects. Okay. It's cheap insurance. Mm -hmm. So, would it be cost prohibitive to do a waterproof panel? It gets into the NEMA rating, um, and I think, I don't know, but the, and you, maybe you don't know off the top of your head what the NEMA rating is. They're probably NEMA 12, and I think NEMA 4 uh, gets into waterproof. Um, there's a cost difference, but I don't know whether it is off the top of my head. Yes, yeah, sure. Well, the problem is usually the fans, the cooling fans. That's where it gets dicey. Yeah. So you have, you have to have, like, the... Like a, a channeling system that allows the air to flow, but not the water. But not the water right? to so get in there. Need some kind of a so serpentine intake or something. Plus, then you have to spec out at least for the conduit also some kind of splash resistance rating, right? I don't know what kind of conduit you're using, PVC yeah. or steel. I don't know if it's RGS or, or PVC. The if it's SADE. Everything is is. Um, it's either EMT or uh, the stuff that Lee Carroll has spec. Okay. It's either EMT or PVC. And EMT is normally not rated for splashing or for splash water okay. resistance. PVC can be, but EMT is usually not, unless you use the, mm -hmm. out, the outdoor fittings, you know, the, the exterior fittings and so on. So right. So we've got to watch it. That if we do it here, we, do have, we have to do it there, too. Okay. All right, so we can look into that and, and see. One of the panels on the... 101 booster station that is sitting outside in the weather 24 7. They got to be waterproof. Those have got to be waterproof, dustproof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So we'll check on that and see what they are. I mean, I, I'm at a disadvantage because I don't know as much about that design. But yeah, uh, we'd have to look through the spec book. This, this is a, is this a prepackaged pump station, correctly? Yes. Cor it's not Correct. built on site. It's right. brought in, right. placed on the foundation or something, right? Right. Right, right. Right. So the site work will be done. Um, yard piping will be brought into through a concrete pad, and then the station will be brought in and okay. dropped. And who's fabricating that? Has that been decided yet? Yeah. It's it's open bid. Uh, work. We've worked largely with Synchroflow uh, through the whole design process, and they gave us their proposed design. Um, and okay. That's who we've been working with so far. All right. So you can follow up with them to see what options they might have to right do that. Uh, either the panel or some kind of curtain or wall or something, right? Yeah. Okay. We can check that out. Cool. All right. Uh, <clears throat> do you have more to discuss on that, or should we, um, does the commission want to consider at this time taking any action on this um, construction observation proposal? Are you guys in a I have one item to bring up, okay. I think, which is important. It's just the, the cost, obviously. Um, so the cost right now, uh, our numbers are, by the rough estimates that we have, we're about 150000 over the loan amount. Um, and this is largely due to the budget estimate that we got for the prepackaged system from Synchroflow. That came in at 250000 over our, our original estimate. Um, so I just or their original estimate. Their right. original. They estimate. gave us one for early. You come back K. later. They give you another one and it's higher. Yeah, and I don't know if it was a really detailed estimate. The guy kind of got back to me real quick and just shot me, at, you know, mm -hmm. five fifty. So that was a lot higher. 
Um, so just to prepare you, you know, where that's where the numbers sit right now. We do have some, I wouldn't say fluff, but we have some higher numbers uh, in some of our yard uh, site work and and those pieces. So um, our numbers right now are, you know, with the five percent contingency for the project uh, are about 150k higher than the 1.3 million. But I think what we're saying at this point is we need to wait and see because we have different manufacturers and this is one manufacturer that we're getting. We don't know who we're going to get and we don't know what sort of bid prices they're going to get. But um, with the way that the way the industry has been going, all bid prices have been coming in higher, um, not just with us, but pretty much across the industry is what we're finding. So, you know, so. I guess we just need to be prepared. Right, and I'm not sure if that's the kind of number that Synchroflow gave us, because they're seeing higher numbers as well. So, um, yeah, so that's just kind of where it sits. But we do have to wait and see until the bids come in. If we're combining the RPR between two jobs, mm -hmm. are we going to see some savings? I did not. We, well, we did do that, and what you'll see in the, in the scope is that there's a junior RPR, and so that helped to bring some of the savings down. Um, when we did a lot of stuff like that, we reduced a lot of the yard piping down from, from a 16 inch down to a 10 inch, you know, so that's reduced valves, reduced piping. Um, it all still met our standards as far as uh, velocity through those pipes, um, and that reduced the cost quite a bit. I think it, that reduced the cost by about 16,000 itself right there. Um, so, well, the reason why I'm asking if, are, if it's the same. You know, individual, mm -hmm. obviously we have less travel expenses because right. there's now the same guy traveling coming down here for the one job and the other at the same time, right? Yeah. Instead of having two people travel from from where we travel. Right, right. I mean, and I'm, I'm looking, We the way we broke this out in, in the Turkey Hill contract is, is the se uh, senior time and junior time. So you've got some guy that you're planning now, and I, I'm not sure how you work that out if we have the junior person identified. We have the senior person identified for Wells 4 and 5, um, and that person will be coming over, but um, I don't know if that's been identified as a person. So. No, we don't have that identified as an individual yet. Okay. But we do have some project engineers in the office that have expressed interest. So. Okay. So. I guess it's, it's, it all depends on the hours that he spends over there versus the hours he spends, spends over there. But there is, there is a savings in terms of one guy does not have to travel, and if one guy is staying, there is time on that, and we will make sure that you, you know, realize that. Right. Okay. So the schedule on that, Tim, is is it's it's in for review by Mike Unger right now. Is Correct. That? Yeah, and we're hoping we're we're hoping to hear this week, but I said that last week too. So we're just trying to get his review finished and then get things out to bid. If we could get his review in this week, then we could turn everything around by Friday, as long as there's not any major changes, which we don't anticipate. And then we'd go out to advertise end of August pre-bid would be September, mid-September, and then we open the bids end of September. That's about where uh, our schedule sits. So the recommendation of award by this schedule would fall onto the October 21st um, Board of Commissioners meeting. Make a motion to approve the um, ESI the Turkey Hill pumping station ESR 34B. Yep, ESR 34B, August 15, 2019. So move. Seconded. Motion by Joe, second by Ken. Any further discussion? For the discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Four zero zero. All right. All right. Great. Good. You can stick around if you want, or you can take off. All right. I leave it up to you. <laughs> Our choice.
move to the back row for a okay. minute. Do you need it? You don't need it. No, I really don't need you for, okay. for this discussion. So, I mean, okay. um, all right. Nice to meet you. Just, just Good to meet you guys, just too. give you the option. Yeah. <laughs> no, I guess I'll scoop them. Okay. All right. See you guys. All right. Okay. We'll see you, Tim. All right. So, I look at my list. So, the next thing I had was um, Wells 4 and 5. And, and I'm just going down the, the way that I had listed it. So, um, yeah. So in terms of let's talk just in terms of status, um, we have a notice to proceed signed with Penta Corporation that is dated October 11th, 2019. So that puts substantial completion uh, based on the contract time at July 31st, 2020, um, with final you know by contract and then final completion by contract they have till September 14th of 2020. But Penta has committed and is aiming for a completion date of July 1, 2020. Um, and as we discussed, you know, we already had that in the bid, so contractually we, we couldn't, you know, shorten their contract time. But uh, they're, they're a good contractor and they're going to they're make any, every effort to make that date because they, they know our need. So what's the September date? Because I thought the last date they had to get everything online was July 31st. It is. It is. It has to be substantially Sorry, complete. So the the final yeah. completion date is is for things you know that you, you know, what we we consider punch list items between substantial and final completion. So the door isn't painted, or you know, um, you know you didn't you know you didn't supply the right operator for that valve or something that needs to be switched. You know, so th those those sort of things that we take care of between substantial and final completion, but. By the definition of substantial completion, that it is it is online and being used for the purpose intended, and, that, and that's the important part, just for the viewing public, public that's here, that um, it was important to us to try and get this pump station Wells Four and Five online um, before or before the main peak of the summer usage next summer. So if we are in a drought. Condition water deficit condition that we will have benefit of having Wells Four and Five online to address that. And originally, this was supposed to be a later September October, and the contractor agreed to work through the winter to do the masonry work with some temporary heating shelters and things in place. Correct. That would help us avoid a four-month winter shutdown. Right. Correct. All right. Great. Um, and so in terms of field work, the field work they've told us they'll be starting in the field August 21st with brush cutting and then they will move to clearing. There's a lot of low level brush they got to get rid of and then there's some tree clearing so that that will get started. Uh, so we'll see we'll see somebody out there soon. So you will also see out there from us soon our RPR uh, who is a gentleman named Joel Moulton. Joel Moulton. Uh, who is actually somebody that we've been working with. He was the DPW director in Elliott, Maine, and, and he is done with Elliott, and we hired him. Um, he has over 20 years of experience uh, in terms of, you know, public works and construction. So we're, we think he's a good individual. We think he's going to work well for the project. Um, so if you want, I mean, I have his resume and stuff. If you want me to provide that, uh, just so you have it for your records, which which I didn't, that didn't go in your packet, but that I mean, I'll, I'll get you a copy of his resume. Which is yeah. Is he planning on staying in his residence in Maine and traveling, commuting day by day? I or? think he'll be traveling. Yeah, I think he's going to commute day by day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Be quite a little. Uh, yeah. And well, you know, and, and if he so, I mean, the way that we work this is we, you know, when we work with our RPRs, we give a per diem, which could either be for staying overnight or it could be for traveling. Uh, so, you know, if he decides that traveling is too much, sometimes an RPR will stay Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, and then go home. You know, so we'll we'll see how it works out. But right now, I believe he's planning on travel. It's only an hour. Yeah, it's less than an hour. Away. Is it less than an hour? Yeah. Right. Where is it, Elliot? Elliot, Maine. Oh, yeah. 45 minutes to the Scatterquarter Bridge. Yeah. Sounds like you know that one well. Yeah, okay. Sounds like you're a lead foot. <laughs> <laughs> kind of is. He was right me the other day. <laughs> uh, we're going to need to address a couple of change orders on, on Wells 4 and 5. Uh, one of which is right now we have both 
options 2A and 2B in there. We have both uh, a manual transfer switch and, and a generator um, with, with one being, I think, 18,000 and another 180,000. So we awarded it with both in there knowing we were going to take one out at your choice. And we have about, let's see, we have till the end of uh, excuse me, August to, to, as far as Penta is concerned, to make that decision. Um, I had a feeling based on past discussions on generators that you would go for the generator, but I, I, we need, I, I need the board's decision on that as to what, what you want to do on that. I actually have a, I do have a question, if you could refresh my memory. Yeah. That price for the generator, does that, in, does that include both wells four and five that would be powered or just one or the other? I know that we had that discussion before That's and right. I, just, I don't right. recall where it landed. Boy, yeah. I, I don't know off the top of my head. I. I think it did, it, Pete didn't say in that email he sent out? No. He didn't. Okay. Um, yeah, we have to address that because that was a big question. Okay. So, that was um, a big difference in price. So the 180 might not cover both wells, I'm wondering then. Right. Yeah. But the mobile one does cover both, right? We should be able to cover both with, with, with ours. With your right. mobile generator. How long can we delay carting the mobile one, mobile one over? We should have time. There's water in the storage tanks. Yeah, no, it, it definitely there's, you know, we would know when there's a power outage and, you know, depending on the severity, we can get somebody right out and get it over there. And um, generally we, now we swap it around. So we, if, we, if it's needed at the booster, we bring it to the booster, then we, you know, we go over to wall two, then we'll go to wall two with it. So it, it would, it, it hasn't been a problem. And typically during power outages, it's, there's not a huge demand. So that's true. I'm just sending Pete a test. Assuming that it's in the middle of winter, we don't have a huge demand. Yeah. But, um, yeah. How long can we delay having power without, in a, without an impact? Can you go two weeks? <clears throat> yeah, we could. Um, no, I mean, no, depending I mean, on the time of year. So, I mean, we had, back to the ice storms, we, and my recollection was we went almost, I want to say we went almost went a week, pretty close to a week because we, we didn't have we didn't have a generator so with the turkey hill booster um, enough water and storage but again it was middle of winter there's not a whole lot of demand so we had we were just to the end when we, we needed to have something come in it, we get the power back up just in time but um, so during peak times do we have enough time to recognize that we have an outage it's severe we need to run over to what's it called? It could, uh, it could be close. Park and park and drive, right? Uh, oh, uh, the Turkey Hill booster right now. Um, that's where we would boot, we would park the generator to, to boost the, the uh, right the pressure up. But the generator right now is at Parker, right? E um, yes. Yes. Okay. Is it being run on a frequent basis? Yes. Are we do? Are, yeah, we, you know, are we exercising yes. it? Or? They are. They are exercising they it. Are. It's not being not being used. Load tested. Right. Regularly, but we do test it. We do bring it out to a station every, every so often, and we plug it in and, and power up the station with it. But, okay. Uh, it would be a little bit more difficult peak season to to do the swap offs. We'd have to make do with if that was the. So assuming it takes you two hours to mobilize somebody, have them drive out, hook it up to a truck and bring it over where we need it and, and get it up and running, two or three hours. Yeah. Right, it's maybe four hours max, right? Uh, probably quicker than that, but yeah, I, I guess so two to three. Can we accept four hours of being without power during peak season? Um, one thing you gotta keep in mind, we're gonna actually, the Turkey Hill Booster is being built with a generator. So 
That's right, but this is four and five. Right. So okay. Pete responded that we can run both wells four and five and the treatment plant off the generator, off the proposed generator. Oh, okay. So also the wells. Yes. Off, off the portable. Off, off. He, he. I believe he's. This is off the the, the one that that Penta would be providing. If, one? Yeah, if they're oh. going to provide that. So for 180, we can get the whole station powered back right. up. Yeah. I said, can we run both wells four and five off the generator? He said, yes, and the plant too. So I, so that means, and the plant has smaller, you know, smaller loads. The biggest loads are always the well pumps. So 120. once we get the new booster, Turkey Hill booster station up with it, with its generator, yep. if we do a per, uh, permanent generator at wells four and five, then I'm assuming we're going to do a permanent generator wells two and three. Right. So in the future, we're also we going to, what are we going to do with our portable generator just in case one of the generators fail? <laughs> we could do that or we could uh, so like a backup, backup generator. Sell it as well. Yeah. If, the, if, if it's 180, I mean, for some reason we thought it was more expensive, so I feel better that it's not the higher, it's not more than 180 that we were thinking it might be. I don't know. It's we don't need a decision at this minute, but we would need a decision before the next commissioner's meeting. Yeah, so I'd rather, if we can do it now, we should. There's no more information coming to consider, right? No, no, no. Just, uh, I didn't know if you us, so, wanted yeah. to think about the existing generator more or, you know. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the 180 is included in the projection, projected uh, over shortage. Yes, that's figured into the budget right now. Yeah. Yeah, because we're, that's based on the, the contract amount as awarded. And right now it includes both that and the automatic, excuse me, the manual transfer switch. So whichever one so we, we do will be a deductive change order sure, yeah. reducing the contract by that much amount. There is a transfer switch with, that's going to go in with the generator. That's got to have an automatic transfer an automatic. switch. Okay. So in the interim, if we don't approve the 180 now with a permanent generator, we could be stretched a little thinner with the portable generator having a run between the Turkey Hill booster, well two, well three, mm -hmm. if it happened in the summer. If it happened in the summer, yeah. Yeah. And which, we might have to impose some temporary restrictions just to get through that period, but which I think would be reasonable mm -hmm. um, if, if it had to been. If we had to. Right. The automatic transfer switch, can that be used in, you know, if for some reason the backup generator doesn't work, the permanent permanently installed one, can we still plug in the mobile one? Yeah, because all the, I, I think so, because all that automatic transfer switch, all it's doing is, is shunting power from one to the other. Right, so but I, it requires that we have a socket. Yeah, right. You would have to, I mean, it would have to be wired into that socket, right, yeah. but that could be so done. I'd, I'd be saying we need, we should be doing that. Yeah, it's a little, 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 little to no cost, couple hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, but it's nice insurance. I, I think I'm in favor of the permanent generator. I, I am too. I know you probably were because you, you said that before. I, mean, so. I, I look at it different than you guys probably, being in the emergency services. I look, I look, look at the worst case scenario, a terror attack, take out the power grid. Yeah. You don't have power back for a month or more. Or here's another scenario, we go to bring the portable generator and there are trees down in the way and we have to cut trees out of the way and that takes eight hours, 12, you know what I mean? So we're not sure we're gonna have a fortunate power outage where we'll just be able to drive right to the station, plug it in. So mm -hmm. I don't know, this could be all kinds of what if scenarios, right? Um, and if it's already rolled into the price I don't know I think we should go with it Wait. someone wants to make a motion and I move we go with the hundred eighty thousand dollar generator power the whole plant seconding motion by Joe second by Ken for going with the permanent generator wells four and five for hundred eighty thousand any other discussion anybody uh, no other discussion. Let's vote uh, in favor. So signify by saying aye. 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 
Anybody opposed? Yes. Okay. Four one zero. Two three one zero. Three one zero. Thank you, Colin. Okay, the other change order item, and I'm not suggesting any change order at this moment, um, but is the sewer. So yeah. we, as you know, we're, we're turned down by the town in terms of putting the backwash to the wastewater plant. Um, so right now, what's in the contract, what was bid, was a 15-inch sewer going to a manhole. And so that's what, that's what we own. And what we have permitted from the, the town is a uh, E1 type pump station with a two inch plus or minus, it might be one and three quarters, I don't know, whatever the exact size is, force main. Um, the, the, so what we will need to do, uh, and, and on this we have 60 days, um, so we don't need to have this arranged till the end of October, I mean at the latest, uh, or excuse me, end of September, sorry, end of September. Um, and this is just the time frame that the contractor said, I just need to know within this time frame in order to make this, you know, would, we'd have to execute a change order, essentially um, giving them some more design details on that E1 pump station and the, and the small force main and taking out the 15 inch sewer that's going to that manhole right now. So we're pumping sewer? Yeah. Like, like sewer sewer? So it, it, that would only be bathroom. for the bathroom. The bathroom and whatever, I, I, I'm not the sure if any of the instruments. There. Yeah, the analyzers or anything. The, the analyzer. Some of the, I think, I think we might have had uh, floor drain or anything that could get chemicals in them going to the sewer as opposed to going to the infiltration basin. But, it, but, but it's a small amount. So they, they, would, they would only, when we said, um, first they were going to let us go by, well, they wanted us to put a six inch sewer and we said six inch can we put eight inch because we can't get the the grade that you want with with six inch and and they wouldn't they wouldn't allow anything greater than six inch so um and then they said you, with the flows you need you only need a two inch you know why don't you do you know, so they were sort of dictating what you know the amount of sewage that was going to be coming from the station and what could what they would approve for a permit. That's what we have right now approved for a permit from them. Um, is what is a two-inch force main with a little pump station, station that would be pumping essentially any sanitary sewage. You know, it's like a domestic uh, yeah. size, you know, home size, you know, individual pump station. And the reasoning is so we don't put anything else in there. Yeah, they did. They did. Uh, I, I guess I, I'm not subject to what their thinking is, but presumably, yes, that would keep you from putting anything that would have that they you know would be concerned about that might have PFAS in it going to the. To the well, I'm definitely sewer. a fan of gravity over pumping. Um, yeah. I don't know why. So it was a preference we wanted more than a six-inch gravity line but they would only allow us up to a six inch gravity line? Yeah, they wouldn't allow, because when they said six inch in, in the meeting that we had yeah. there, you know, Pete had asked about an eight and he had gotten sort of muffled, you know, we weren't really sure. And, and then we asked afterwards in writing and they said, you don't need anything greater than six, so we won't allow anything greater than six. So can we go ahead with the six? Wasn't there a problem with I, the slope? I think there was a problem with slope. So could we get a waiver from that or something? Or well, and, and now, I guess the bigger question is, is whether we want to pursue going to the sewer anyways. I mean, I think you had talked about maybe a meeting with the town and DES. I think we should tr explore that, that avenue again. And, and yeah. Where is the sewer? The sewer runs parallel to the railroad track, the interceptor. You going to the interceptor? So we'd be going to the interceptor. With that two inch pump, you don't have to go all the way down there, do you? No, we could just bump it up to uh, take front it up street to the manhole that, uh, and the to front street. Right now, it's <clears throat> still going back. Still going back down to that interceptor. Yeah, isn't there closer? That I don't know, because we've always been going to what I thought was the closest sewer point, which was, but I, I don't know if there's one on Front Street that we would go to. Do, do you know, Ron? I don't know, but it seems like it would almost be the same distance either way we go. Mm. But, I, I, but I don't know that I'd have to... You'd have to look at the sewer map. Yeah. Well, but, I mean, the issue is not necessarily distance. The issue is that we are asked to pump 
sewer, which I think is a bad idea if we can avoid it, right? I agree. I mean, is the alternative to do a leach field in a septic tank? Or you can't do that. It's right. sewer, you have to go it's too the far sewer away. Available. Yeah. We can't do a septic tank or a septic system inside the 400 foot radius of the well, and the 400 foot radius goes out into Front Street. Right. So yeah. there's there's nothing that we can put on the property that would be inside. I mean, outside that limit. We even talked about getting rid of the bathroom, but we thought that was a bad idea as well. Yeah, we we talked about agree. that, and it's it's really a good idea for a for a treatment plant to have a bathroom. Sure. Um, but believe me, because we've <laughs> we've done it before, where the just telling uh, everyone when we rolled it all around every which way to figure yeah, out. Yeah, the the, the the owners have not wanted a bathroom and and then people have to go someplace yeah. when they're at that. So it's it can yeah. it can be a bad thing. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's not required, I don't think. But it's not it's, required. It's you do not good, have to have a bathroom because it's idea a idea to avoid one. So it's not something, again, that needs to be decided tonight, and maybe we go ahead and get this meeting set up, you know, to try and uh, with maybe with the help of DES to allay the concerns, because we really feel that, that the, the concerns on the PFAS coming into that are not necessarily well-founded. Um, right. Well, I mean, plus the design can be made such that the two are physically separated by, by a distance, right? I mean. As far as the well, this would be accepting the backwash waste for the new GAC. That was yeah. the concern. So the, the the whole the whole sewer the whole 15 inch sewer sizing was to allow backwash the initial backwash of the GAC right. contactor to go at just at startup or upon you know re rebedding or you know changing the media out uh, change out yeah. that but we could. We're not going to do that. Right now, we're going to the infiltration basin. Correct. Yeah. So if we keep that plumbing separated from each other. And you know maybe design yeah. even far apart and put the bathroom in the other end of the building, right? Well, it shouldn't be, be that hard to get a sewer line. No, I mean it, it, I guess the question will be if if and my understanding was that we couldn't meet the grade that, that was required with a six inch sewer between those t two points elevation points, but we could with the eight because we need a steeper slope on the six inch, right? Yeah, to put us coming out of the ground or something at one spot. Yeah, yeah, it just wasn't yeah. going to work. Um, so that, so so even even you know if we separate the separate them out and we're held to you know no bigger than than six, then that that's when, you know, I, I believe that's when from um, Ken Conaty, I believe is his name, the the sewer inspector guy said, you know, then then why don't you do this because we're not going to allow you to go bigger than a six inch. But again, if the concern is. To allow us to go bigger than a six inch, just because they're afraid that we're going to put in backwash, let's let's make concessions, right, and, and make it clear that that's not the intention and never will be. Let's keep the plumbing far apart, so it's not even that easy to just plumb it over, right? I guess what you're saying is it should be easy for the town to come and we'll see the treatment plant right. and confirm that yeah. we don't have the ability to backwash the carbon vessels into the sewer, whether right. it's a six or a fifteen or eight inch pipe, it doesn't matter. Right if we don't have a connection to the sewer. What you're saying makes sense, sense, to, I know. Makes <laughs> sense to me. Um, but maybe I, we can propose these things at a meeting is, is yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a meeting is in order yeah. and necessary in order to do that because we didn't see a whole lot of flexibility right. uh, when we met with them before. And when we met with them before, they just kind of dropped the bomb on us that they don't want us to tie in the sewer at all from the backwash and we never had a chance to really think about a rebuttal to that an alternative yeah I think that meeting position from their point of view was decided before we ever walked right. in that door that's the I was at that one too so I remember everything you're saying <laughs> very very concisely yes that was uh, we, we had lots of arguments as to why it really would not be you know it wouldn't be impacting them and uh, after floating one or two of those it became apparent that no matter what we argued the mind was made up so if you want to go ahead and um, try to work on setting up another meeting, um, if you need any help from that or whatever, if you contact the town or whatever, let me know. Or if anybody else wants to assist Ron with anything. Um, I may sit down, try to sit with Kyle first, okay, yep. one on one. And, and, uh, and maybe we can talk to the town council too. I mean, you know, it's a partnership, obviously. It's, it's, it's a perfectly fine to commit to very clearly to 
to, to never ever place any backwash into that sewer line. But mm -hmm. I think you need to be given a fair chance to have proper bathroom bond without yeah. jumping through hoops. Right, right. And you know, so. and on, on their side, I mean, they, they do have concerns. They are getting PFAS in their sludge. And they, there are water quality, I mean, surface water quality limits coming down the pike. So, I, you know, I don't want to say that they don't have any concerns. So. Right, and that's yeah. appreciated. But again, yeah. we're not yeah. talking, we're talking about bathroom plumbing. Yes, I know. Period. Yeah. Right. That's what we're talking about now. Yeah. Right, and I think there has to be the message. We're now talking about bathroom plumbing. So on that front, have, have we confirmed, that I was kind of going off on a different subject, but have we confirmed we can put the backwash water into an infiltration basin with DES? Yes. Yeah, they've, they've given us the approval to do that. It is not the concern about any arsenic issue? Or we just got well, to make sure we use the double acid rinse? Well, right now we're getting the Evoqua, I can't remember the exact designation of the product because they have several different ones, but it's it's the one that showed less than five parts per billion on our sort of improvised it's arsenic testing. summarized very well in your well seven and eight report. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where it's it's, it's, so it's I'm discussed there. it's probably the same yes. media. Yeah, that's the one that we're getting. And, and 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 we should we can talk more and maybe we don't need to talk about it here in a commissioners meeting about whether soon that's what we get low arsenic do we want to standardize and can we standardize on that for well seven and eight and two and three it would be nice if we could I mean I don't know if we get any bulk discounts of using the same exact carbon media on all our future stations but mm -hmm. it seemed to me that that would be better and, uh, but we're, we're going to have to do something probably at seven and eight like that anyways, correct? Right. Yeah. Because we have no sewer option there at all. Right, we have to go. What's the cost difference between the little pumping station and the gravity sewer? I thought I thought we said it's about the same. I really don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we've costed it out because we weren't quite sure whether we were going to have to go that way or not. Uh, and maybe maybe Pete and Lynette have costed it out, and they just I, I just don't they, know. I don't know. They talked to you about that cost. I, I haven't heard. But I remember hearing it's not much different one way or the other. Yeah, I don't think it would be. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess we can just, just consider just the table this for. We can table next that, meeting. have that, and then we can get that by the next meeting, and yeah. that still gives us plenty of time to let Penta know within the time frame that they've identified. Okay. And they need to know by the end of September. You by said? the end of September. Okay. So we should make a decision on this by in our next meeting. September and then the other thing and and, and uh, I know Pete and, and Ron have been discussing this is a fire uh, suppression system waiver um, right now we have fire suppression systems designed into both the Turkey Hill actually I don't know if it's in the Turkey Hill right it's now it's not in the Turkey it's not Hill booster in. yet okay but if we need to it'll have to be incorporated in and that will be an additional cost additional yeah. cost yeah. it is designed into the well four five uh, treatment facility and I will say that this is this is a new requirement for us in the last few years with the code change. Uh, we ran into it in the last pump station we did in Raymond where we kind of went, you want a fire suppression system and a water pump station? Um, okay, it's all made of concrete and metal and but um, so in going through that process, we found out that from with the fire chief that there is a, a waiver process. So I think we were going to go ahead. I did ask Pete to go ahead and put something together yeah. so that we can at least apply for the waiver and for the booster station as well as four and five. And so we'll apply for that, and if they get the waiver, then we would be talking to Penta about taking that out of the Well Four Five building. Okay. And that would that would be a change order, but that's an undefined amount at this time. You know, they've given us in their their schedule of values what they're carrying for that, but. Oh, they did. Yeah, but you never you never know if you're going to get back the same amount that uh, you know huh. after the bid as you would before the bid. But, I, but we do have an identified amount for the fire suppression system, so so there's there's something to start with. It's not like a couple hundred bucks, right? No, it's like <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, That's good. So well, yeah, and Pete did say that you talked him about that, so he he said he will be preparing those those waivers. Okay. Um, that's all I had on four or five on my list. I don't know if there's anything else that you guys had. That's more than was on our list, so okay. that's good. Okay. <laughs> um, wells two and three, uh, there wasn't much in there on that. Uh, so the, the pilot, the, the iron and manganese pilot has been completed. Uh, one thing about the iron and manganese pilot is when we went to actually start it, the iron and manganese levels were low. They weren't as high as wow. they are in well three when it's used after a long period of time. And I don't 
Was was free offline? Um, it's. I should no, look at the trend. Really, but it's usually the last one we start and mm -hmm. the first one we shut down when we, you know, as the peak season drops off. Okay, and historically, three would have high iron and manganese, and they'd rest it for up. I don't know, part of the year, most of the year, yeah. and the iron and manganese concentrations would go down, and then when you start using it, they start yeah. to climb again, presumably as the cone of influence starts to get out and start to contact some of those deposits, you know, around Green's Pond that have Makes the sense. iron and manganese. I, I, that's, that would be my estimation. So, so the, the pilot worked great, but we were on kind of low iron and manganese values. Um, it will still, you know, give us the information that we need for design, flux rates and everything else. Um, so it, it's not a problem, but I'm just telling you that there was, you know, like iron, when they, they got in touch with us the first day to say, iron's at only like 0 0.2, and, and manganese was around 0 0.1 or something like that. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but they were like lower than the high values that we told them when, you know, when we, when we set up the pilot. So again, not an issue. I don't think it's going to affect the green sand process or anything. But so they didn't find anything abnormal other than that. I mean, it's because the green sand process still worked. There wasn't yeah. any kind of anomaly that no. prevented the green sand from filtering. No, we don't have the final report yet, so we're waiting. We're yeah. waiting on that. But there's nothing to indicate that that's that you know the the green sand plus process won't work. Okay. And then we took water from that pilot. Uh, and ship that off to uh, the uh, RSSCT uh, contractor, uh, EPS, and those are in process. Um, I believe Billy told me they're somewhere around the 70,000 bed volume area now in terms of how many, how long it's been going, but we don't have results yet. We're still waiting to get the actual. So those are the column tests from well three treated iron and manganese that we're removing PFAS in the columns. To yeah, so we, we took we took water from well three from the iron and manganese pilot so so that we had treated effluent from the green sand facility. That's yep. that's what we're trying to achieve and then combine that in the same proportion with well two water that we would expect those two to be using be running at. So fifteen hundred gallons a minute from well two, thousand gallons a minute from, from well three, that you know that one to one and a half, yeah. you know, ratio. Uh, combined, and then that's what's being put through the RSSCT with three different kinds of carbon. Okay. So that that's in process, and so you you are looking at it with both two and three combined. Combined. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Because that that's what we talked about, and that's, yeah, that was one of my yeah. concerns. Yeah. Thing. That's that's the way it's being run. So on that green sand, if the iron and manganese does increase like we expect it will, and well three might be stressed in more of a drought condition or something. What would be the change on that? Would it just need to backwash more frequently, probably? The, or? the change might be we need to change our chem feed a little bit. Yeah, up we, the chem feed. And we might need to derate the flow a little bit, in in terms of you know if we were feed, if we were running at say eight gallons a minute per square foot, we might have to back off to you know seven gallons a minute yeah. per square foot or something like that. Okay. That's that's the usual. Need a little more detention time. Contact time? Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah empty band contact time yeah. is really what it would give you. Okay. Okay. Um, Do you have anything else on two and three? or? Uh, I, I don't. The only other question I had, I don't know if, Ron, you could maybe update us. I know um, Jill made a good point last time. Of, we, we were still trying to get a layout of um, the treatment plant at Wells two and three and to make sure the site is designed so in the future we could expand it or add a new headquarter facility in that site. And um, Jill had mentioned to go and take a look at Penichuk because she believed they had a combined office and treatment plant. Mm -hmm. Just kind of see how that looked, if it looked appealing to us. Um, have we contacted them I at have. all? So we can... Uh, Don has gotten back to me. He was open for tomorrow um, after two or Thursday, pretty much all day or at a later time. So I can okay, uh, we can certainly kick around if that works, and if not, we can maybe throw some dates back to him. Yep, I think Thursday would probably work. If now on that score, 
um, we actually went to the Penetech water treatment plant. Um, Lynette and I, when we were down here one day, we were here for something else, and we said, let's go see this to see what, what you know, they were talking about. So, and it turns out she really wasn't talking about the, the treatment plant. Right, it was the, the new uh, warehouse facility. Warehouse facility, okay, yeah. so, so just, just so you know, it's not that, because if you go to the treatment plant, you'll go, what's she talking about? Because there, there's, there's a building in front which looks very much like part of the treatment plant, which it is. It's the chemical receiving <coughs> facility where they, all the chemicals are come in and then that's attached to the treatment plant. So it's the, distribu is it the distribution? I get, yeah, I guess it's distribution warehouse. Warehouse. So we're not really yeah. looking at what we thought we were gonna be looking it's, at even if we go to Penichuk then? It's not a treatment plant, but it's, the same idea. It's how the oh, yeah. Yeah. design, I guess, look of it. So there's an room. office adjacent to more of a yeah. maintenance style uh, facility yes. or something? Yeah, I, I think you'll, I mean, if you look at it, you will at least, I think that's what she was envisioning for, and, and it could be, I mean, make that box behind it a treatment plant instead of a, a maintenance yeah. facility. Right. So I guess I'm wondering, is, is this holding you guys up from continuing no. your site design on this? Because I, I don't want to be spending a month trying to get a meeting and go, you know. Well, the, obviously we've been really pushing on seven and eight, yeah. uh, and, and then we'll be pushing more on two and three. So, you know, now that we have the preliminary design report into you and we're about to go into final design, you know, so we're gonna be pushing that ball forward, but we'll be pushing the two, three ball forward more now. So it's, it's not holding us up, but probably would be in the next few weeks. That's why I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. what I wanted to find out. Yeah. So. As, as far as the headquarter building, just a general quick off the, off the hip question and maybe answer as well. Would you want to consolidate the garage and the headquarters and the treatment plant or just the headquarters and the treatment plant? I, I was thinking more just the, the headquarters and the treatment plant. I think the, the garage space that we have is more than adequate. I mean, we do have the, 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 I mean, there is a traffic concern there, but it's, I think it's minimal to us in and out, I think. It was more of a concern for public coming into the to the new office building if it was down there that it would that's more frequent. That was more of my concern. I think there's adequate space down there. And, um, it's more of a matter of sand official. Pits still, the sand pits. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go, no, but the sand pits there. That if we need material, it, that that's all laid out down there. So I think it suits better down there. Okay. So it doesn't. It's not worth the cost of relocating all of that over to here. And it seems like it would be kind of an astronomical. I think so. I, I think it's there. It's you can't really move the sand bank. <laughs> yeah. and that's there. Uh, but I think it's. It was more of a matter of efficiency. Did, you know, yeah. You, know, you have your meter shop and so on down there, right, in the, in the garage. Yeah. Um, would it make sense to bring some of that up to the headquarters, and for the public again, remind us this. Just to make this design future proof as far as the treatment plan, not right. to, to kick anything off here at all. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, would there be portions of, the, of whatever you're doing down at the garage that would make sense to bring it up to the headquarters to, you know, to, to reduce travel time back and forth, to, to improve communication, material yes, flow? Would be, definitely, so maybe some offices would be incorporated, you know, the distribution office and treatment office possibly could be uh, about the operation managers. Mm -hmm spot could be there as well so, yeah something like that but all of this is office environment would you be looking for any for any shop kind of storage shop maintenance skater I wasn't, I wasn't, skater probably right the skater would be yeah right um, i wasn't envisioning storage but that's something we can definitely look at possibly it could be but none of the, the, the meter shop or something would preferably be relocated up here. I wouldn't or think so. Over there. It seems like it would make sense down there. That's where they re okay. that's where they report. It just seems to make sense. So really for you, it's just a matter of it's just configuration. parking and office space, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we. I mean, the treatment plant. We're we're moving. You know, we. There's about what four different kind of alternative layouts that you guys have put forth, and you mm -hmm. probably didn't see all of them. Mm -hmm. So. No. Um, that might be good to maybe have in the next packet. Uh, although I think we want to get you guys going on a design before that, right? You said yeah, a couple but we things. can. I mean, we you are going to see a, a, a two three 
wells two and three preliminary design report, but by the time we do that, we would have a, a set um, layout. So uh, we can certainly include in the next packet just what's gone by, I mean, what we've looked at, and then if we decide between now and then something else, then we'll, we can talk about that at the next meeting. But I don't have any, I mean, sure, we can include that so you can see the ones that we you know, presented and did, did in sort of a workshop session. Right, right. which I saw because I was there, but not everybody right. else was there. Right. Well, you're our designated. I'm the designated, you're the desi it, the designated you're, project representative or something? Yeah, or something? You're, you're authorized <laughs> by the Board of Water Commissioners to sort of act as their representative with us right. and, and working with Ron, because normally we work through Ron and Jill, and, and you, you were kind of involved anyway, so we, we sort of said, let's make uh, a designee so that, that right. we have something going directly to the board. But then, if you included all the board members on an email, then it's a, then it's a meeting, and you exactly. have those issues. So, yeah. If you could do we me a favor, and, and yeah. um, if you could okay. send me those sketches, yeah, then I can at least get them out to you guys. So you sure. Can see what I'm talking about. Sorry for not doing that. Okay. Uh, that's all I had on two and three. Um, I, I don't. I, I saw your email on the zeolite. I have not had a chance to yeah, review all I, that stuff. Uh, so at this point, we can. I, I opened it and I went. Oh my goodness! There's a lot here. So yeah. I, I really didn't have time. Um, so moving to well seven and eight. So you you have the preliminary design report that was um, that was shipped out on Friday, I think. Uh, we also put in the final design phase contract. Um, and then the schedule, I think, was that we'd already given was put with that preliminary design report. I don't think there's any change in the schedule in terms of what we were anticipating. Um, and then there's a cost opinion in there. Um, and we had said that adding the lag vessels we thought was going to roughly add three million to the total project roughly cost when you when you add the vessels and the additional building space and whatever else is required and this one is something less than a million more you know uh, when we look at the construction cost estimate so that seems to be holding true um, so um, where is that let's see so before We, were, we had a subtotal for construction of about 3.2 million, and we're at about 4.13 million right now. Um, but I don't know if you've had really a chance to digest that report or look at anything or have questions that you want to talk about now, or, or I mean, we don't need to go over those, but I guess the way that we were looking at that is we sent the report to you in draft, so they give you an opportunity to look at it, review it, and then get us any comments that you have and our thought was we would final try and finalize it for the next commissioners meeting just so it was you know right. you have a final document that, that you guys have weighed in on so you know the one thing i saw here in a couple places is um we're not looking at doing dechlor dechlorination after the green sand filters if we use carbon is that correct correct but we would have to if we wanted to use resin correct First. Right. If you, if you want yeah. to use resin first, chlorine, chlorine will impact resin. Any oxidant will so impact resin. Is there any concern about the, cause the chlorine is also going to take uh, spots on the carbon resin? There's some I mean, concern, but medium, not. It's, it's not enough. To it's like not enough. It's 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 very minor. Cause like premature um, breakthrough. Breakthrough. Of the if all the carbon sites are. We, we've talked to the manufacturers, you know, the GAC suppliers about that, and, and their biggest concern is, is things like total organic carbon. Yeah. So a, a, a little bit of, of chlorine, uh, they're not, at least they have not indicated to us that is a major concern. Okay. If it ever was a concern, how difficult would it be to have to go back in and do a dechlorination process after the green sand? It would be a uh, chemical feed. Set up so you, so you'd have to uh, so not like expanding walls and all these other yeah I mean essentially it's another area to have uh, and, I, and I'm not <coughs> sure of the bulk that you yeah. need uh, for for that but you're talking something like sodium meta meta bisulfite okay um, 
and you know, so you'd have that maybe a day tank and a chem feed pump and um, so so yeah it, it would require an area and a, and a chemical feed process in order to do it okay could that be incorporated into the filter room or would it, if we needed to or is it too far ahead in the process I guess um, does that, does that make to sense? add in dechlor right now it, well, no, not if right now but in, at a future would it would we have space in the uh, filter room the honest answer is I don't know right and, now but I guess, uh, I'm going to find out <laughs> <laughs> and I guess my other part of it was it was it too far ahead in other words does it need to be back in the, the plant more mm -hmm. part could of it be the in process. the addition or it has to be in right. the main plant yeah. right Oh, yeah, yeah, just in terms of the process room, flow. We've got probably a little bit of room in the addition, especially if we don't put the anion resin. Right, we're, we're putting, we're making room to add anion tanks later. You know, resin tanks later. Um, <clears throat> so there, there would be room there. Of course, we wouldn't want to then take that room and put kind of feet in there. Yeah. But, but um, I'm thinking of, like off to the but, corner or something, if there was yeah. enough room to do something or. <coughs> So what what I will have us do is see what would be involved for dechlorination and what's you know what's the layout you know what's you know how big a tank you know what what do we need to do and how much room will that take up and then we can talk about whether there is room now or whether we want to dedicate a space for that. Yeah, I mean that was just something that I I saw in here and I remember talking about it before, um, but I don't see any other. Issues that you can think of that we might need to consider that could happen in the future. If we wanted to put res, I mean, right now the way we're designing these things is so that uh, we're designing them for GAC, but so that they could accept resin if they needed right. to at some point in the future. Of course, the way we're looking at it right now is we'd have resin, excuse me, GAC as the lead, and then resin as a polishing. So the chlorine would be gone in the carbon, and then it would be we right. Could go right into the go resin. into the resin. And then you get done with that, yeah. not have to worry about chlorine, and then you could rechlorinate or, or chlorinate after that. So dechlorination, does that cause some kind of runoff? Uh, is there some kind of, I don't, that's, that's you know, it's not it's something not, that I'm terribly familiar with. Right? Yeah, it's, it's well, not so something I'm terribly familiar with. Actually, yeah, put that in your note, can we... We have to generate any kind of backwash. Oh, believe me, I'm, I'm, I'm. <laughs> it's, it's already occurring to me, and I, I'm. That, that's why I'm going to say I'm going to see what the layout is and what the space is, and that includes whether there's any discharge. I don't think there is. I think it is a simple chemical reaction. Would it, would it be the same? And I don't know a whole lot about it, but would it be the same process? Like if you're going to flush a chlorinated water main, you're going to dechlorinate it before you right. discharge on the ground. So I don't think it would be. Uh, there shouldn't be a problem with, with discharge. But no, there should not be a waste stream with this. So that's that's my gut, but I didn't want to say some, definitively that there is. Be, this is and, then, <laughs> and then come back later and find out, yeah, I was yeah. wrong. So um, that's why I'm saying... I just said that for the benefit of the DPW. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there is. And, and, and dechlorination is something that we do a lot more on the wastewater side. Uh, so we have people who do that in-house on, on the wastewater side. We, it's not something you normally end up doing on the water side. Okay. So I mean we we have the expertise. We can we'll take a look at that and then I will, you know, get back to Ron and and Don as the designee on that. I just wanna make point out that um I've gotta leave um uh, by six forty five the latest and I think um Joe also has a commitment as well. He was the he's the vice chair, he would take the meeting over. But we both have to leave about the same time, so I think that's going to be the end of the meeting because we won't have a quorum, have a at, that quorum at that point. So I don't know if we can try I'm, to get through the rest of this. I'm pretty. Good. I mean, unless you know, unless you had any major issues on the on the report, and then the other thing is the design phase contract, which we put in there, uh, and whether and, and then I have all the trending. I do have a question on those. Okay, so I mean, you don't. In terms of the design phase contract, you can look at that. Let us know. Um, and, and then, and that's really, I think, all as I had on seven and eight. And then, and then the budget, you know, we, we know that seven and eight is going to cost more, so we'll have to think about how we're going to deal with that. Um, but we do have funding that has been approved through DES, or through, excuse me, through the Drinking Water Groundwater Trust. Right, right. And you got the letter that they? Yeah, I just actually just passed it out to 
to the well, I didn't just pass it out, but the beginning of the meeting it just passed out. Right. Right. So do we do a new package or um, a new package? I don't, it was I don't think it came in the package because I think it came later. Oh, no, 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 okay. There was one was in the packet, but then this was the actual. So yeah, the one is the uh, SRF funding. Okay. Is in the package. And this is the. Okay. But but just one thing I just want to get on to the record before we leave this is that our, our thought is that you don't use the SRF funds. For for well seven and eight right so that we have one project that's not subject to davis bacon and ais and let's let's put that all on the one project on wells two and three and that allows us to continue with seven and eight without those additional requirements yeah. which you can do so i just had a, a couple of quick questions i'll try to be brief but okay. um, on page 11 of 28 uh like this third paragraph down it says during the evaluation phase, they estimated one and a half years of bed life for long chain compounds and four to six months for short chain, which was not significantly more than estimated bed life from GAC manufacturers. Oh. Uh, right. So what's that? what that is saying is during the evaluation phase, they being the resin manufacturers, Estimated that they would get one and a half years of bed life if they were only removing long chain compounds, C8 compounds, and and maybe four to six months for some of the short chains like the PFBAs, the PFBSs, right. you know, uh, and and that's you know as we went through that and we looked at the cost of resin, which was four to five times in terms of material cost, the cost of GAC, even though you have a lesser amount of it, it, it ended up being a more expensive option. So even the resin, this is talking about. This is talking about resin because it says resin manufacturer estimated bed life based on models. Right. This is a, this is we're talking about resin here. So this is saying that you would only expect four to six months for breakthrough on resin. They were saying with the short change compounds. Yeah. That in four to six months you might expect some breakthrough of. Primarily, I think they say PFBA. Yeah. I thought I always thought resin did a better job at lengthening breakthrough on the short chain, but it's still you still saying uh, this four to six months. This is what they were saying when we went through the evaluation phase. It just didn't seem right to me because I thought I thought resin was always better at longer breakthrough. Than we carbon. we've always heard that resin is better on the short chain. Um, yeah. So I remember hearing this and thinking, okay, that it, you know, it, it did kind of catch me, and I was yeah. like, I don't know if that's we we can check that would, and, and let's yeah, let's just could. see, okay, because that this was something that we got. I mean, it's it's a little while now ago, <laughs> just because we were getting this when we were doing this at the end of last year. Because this is telling us that resin's really not any better than carbon, then, right? At all, it might be worse. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> and actually we have um, one of the resin manufacturers coming in tomorrow to give us a brown bag right. uh, from ECT2. Okay. And um, I will certainly, sorry, um, I will certainly ask him that question. That's my wife. She, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and we'll check on that. Okay. Any other Things yeah, there was another one on uh, page 14. It just said the well pumps will be required to pump through the green sand filters plus the carbon vessels. Yep. Obviously, you need to increase the well pumps because there's more, more head pressure you're pumping against. Yep. That's not going to affect the performance of the green sand filters, what, what pressure they run at. They're probably going to run at a higher pressure because you've got to have more pressure carry through them. Yeah. No. That doesn't do anything on the treatment of efficiency of the green sand filters. Right. No, it's all based on pressure differential. Differential, okay. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure of that. Yeah. I think that's all I had. Okay. Um, and so then you've got the design, final design phase contract, and the, these charts that Wolf had a question on. So I don't, I don't know if there's something you want to act on now or act on on later. Yeah. Right. 
In the engineering order? I think so. <coughs> Excuse me. Is that at the end of this packet? <coughs> Uh, it might have been a separate thing. It's a separate, it's separate front, front right? The, yeah. ESR forty seven. So um, you have a proposal here dated August 19th for well 7 and 8 PFAS treatment final design phase and that's for an amount of $269,000 and um, does anybody have any questions about? I, I do have a question. Yep. On the, on the back uh, the, with the schedule, uh, you say January 24th, uh, 2020, you would have 90% design. I'm uh, just curious, why is, is there like almost, you know, three and a half months or whatever from email 15 for the 100%? Is there a possibility you could have the final design submit for approval before April 15? Um, let's see. So why, let's say August, September, October, sign contract. I know that this was predicated on design, I mean, excuse me, on a schedule that we had before for seven and eight. Which I thought I had with me. Such a deal. Um, so anyways, you're, what you're wondering if it can be moved Sooner than from uh, where January 24, 2020, you would set you uh, states here 90 percent. Oh, 100 percent design. Yeah, um, for that 10 percent. That does seem like a long time. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't know if that was predicated on being after the annual meeting, but so in, in is, general, is there, is there no need? I mean, that that question has been moving. I think all of us quite a bit. I mean. These plans are somewhat copy and paste, right? Not, I know. Not I know, completely. I yeah. know not completely. Yeah, we have the yeah. I manganese treatment and you know two three and so on. Yeah. There are some differences, but yeah. from a general standpoint, from a general layout. Okay, I don't know if the filter dimensions are the same because the pump volumes might be different, but in in a ballpark, there's there's a lot of similarities and certain synergies, right? There, but it seems like we're yeah. applying we're applying the same timeline to all three projects, right? And I think that's one of the things that that you know we and the public, especially now with the MCLs, would like to see how much of that, how much, how many of these synergies can we actually take advantage of and reining in the timeline, right? Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty is three years from now, right? Two years from now, well, twenty twenty two is three years from now. I was going to say. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, so, a lot of the delays here in the beginning for uh, for Wells two and three, right, is is is, is the design phase right now. When you look at the timeline, we're not really breaking ground until what is it twenty twenty one really, right? So yeah. I mean, it's two years from now to break ground, and I think that's. Well, yeah, I, I, I know. That. I know that the time frames that were put in there were were time frames that were typical municipal, you know, project time frames that that. And I think for four and five, that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but 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 two and three and seven and eight, for example, do they really need to be consecutively, or can they be in part, really done in parallel, right? At the same time, why can't they both go online at the same time, for example? Well, seven and eight can go on a lot sooner, just because it's 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 a, it's a simpler project. You know, we have part we have part of that project right. designed. I mean, here we're still. I mean, 
in terms of where we're sitting right now, we we know we have a much better idea what we're going to do at seven and eight than we do in two and three right. because we have other facilities you know that we got to consider and how what the layout is, and so that there's there's a longer time frame to that. Um, uh, you so, know, maybe, so maybe the other question is how many engineering hour, hours do you have until thirty you know sixty ninety percent engineering completion how many engineering hours hours are we talking about and what is the capacity that you have available to fulfill them right I mean are we, are we talking about capacity constraints that drag this out this long is it the permitting process which I don't think it is because we're seeing the permitting process going actually pretty quick quick right now right with, with uh, four and five so I guess if we're talking about you know 2,000 engineering hours okay then we're looking at a year of time right um, are we talking about 500 engineering hours um, that it might not need to be a year until we get to where we need to be yeah I don't have our our estimating sheets right. with, with, with me to give and, and we can give you those you know as, no, as to what maybe, you know the hours are but. maybe that's something we can look at you know yeah. I think specifically well, for for two and three yeah. it just seems a very very long time I mean obviously we've, we've got a lot on your plate right with MVD projects you've mm -hmm. got four of them going on at least that I can count right five really four and five seven and eight two and three booster station, booster station. No, you one in there I mean those are a lot there, there, there is a lot and, de and there's decent sized projects but we you know we we have the staff and we have staffed up you know over the last few yeah. years to, to do this um, you know your 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 point on ninety percent design to April fifteenth again. That's January, February, March, April. That's almost three months. So, uh, I I think that can be, you know, can tightened up. And I and I and I don't know if that was predicated on trying to have that after the meeting. But I I, I don't know. If there's anything? Do, do we to, need that? Because it's already approved. Because you're gonna have the cost at ninety percent. Yeah. We wouldn't have it at one hundred percent till after the meeting, anyways. According to this, so it would almost be better to have the full cost before the meeting and if we need to well the, over, the overrun we have to address in the next annual meeting anyway yeah, for right. all the projects for right. bigger, yeah for so or whatever so it would almost be better to have that 100 percent up front even i don't even know if we can get bids out before the meeting or something you know to mm -hmm. know what the real cost is based on the bid yeah all right well let, let me check on the schedule aspect yeah. between january and april and then uh, good, this is something you could act on afterwards or, or yeah, when do you need us to go authorize this, the seven and eight contract? Is that something you guys wanted um, tonight? We, or, uh, well, you know, ideally it would be tonight, um, but if I need to check the schedule, then I can, you know, you can do it by email approval afterwards. I don't want to hold you guys from... You're not going to hold us up. We're, we're right. not, nothing is going to be held up. Um, we're continuing to, to, to work on this. I, mean, I don't want to hold you up on the schedule because we want because we're talking about schedule. schedule yeah yeah no <laughs> it, it won't a lot of sense. it will not it will not hold us up to talk about schedule okay. so so uh it's just, just let me look into that one detail um because that that got finalized on friday when i was out of the office so i yep. I, I just want to see what went into between november and april mm -hmm. excuse me january and april and then i will get back to you guys on that Thank you. and your point in general was taken all right um, all right so then we have these things unless you had anything else on seven and eight he doesn't <laughs> I do but that's all right it's not it's not important enough no, um, just, wait, 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 just one last thing yeah uh, you have a uh, masonry building with vinyl siding over it to mm -hmm. match the existing building. Yeah. Is that an additional cost to put vinyl over block? Yes. Yeah. Is that significant? I mean, I know, I know I'm just wondering, it's, it's an addition. Would it look really hokey if we didn't put vinyl siding to match the rest of the, out in the middle of Hollis where nobody sees it? I don't know if it's significant enough. I'm trying to remember if there's insulation between the. I believe there is. I think there yeah, is. Some, I think, I think, I think there's R insulating value, value R value between that wall, between the the. Because uh, I was thinking we could just use like a and, split and the vinyl. face block on the outside, but that might raise the cost of the block. The yeah, offsets the vinyl, so maybe it's just not worth it. I just thought I'd ask, but. Yeah. 
What's the rest of the I'm building over there? It's, it's uh, concrete block. So the same as what we already yeah. have. All right, that makes sense to just do the same thing. Then. Yeah, we're sort of trying to standardize on one okay. particular type of construction is what okay. we're doing. And I don't remember, I don't wanna remember exactly, it wasn't it the, it wasn't the uh, more expensive option when we were doing seven and eight, but it was, Yes, the we, we evaluated it back then and came up with this as, as the best option. Right. You did? Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes a lot of sense then. Okay. Okay. And, and if there's more comments, please, you know, you know, get them to us and we will address them. All right. So... So, so you had something on these. All right, so which which one? Um, uh, the MD Wells, Wells 4 and 5 monthly production, 2010 to 2019. All the other charts had a uh, permitted production volume for each well on the chart. On this one, we only have the combined one, right? Because they know. Yeah, I, guess I think, I believe that the permitted production volume was set based on both wells. Uh, not for, for, not for, for I believe it was combined. It was, both it, combined. It, it was a combined so that when, because okay. Emery and Garrett did all this work prior to us um, working for the district, but they, they did establishing the wellhead protection areas for each of your wells or groupings of wells. And, and wells four and five had always been run together and, and then treated through well five. Right. And so when they went to do that, it was treated as a single source. So that's an aquifer amount right. uh, that's, that that green line is showing on wells four and five. But that makes actually the next question yeah. even, even worse because um, I don't know if that can be seen in the camera or not, but on the chart we actually exceed with well just well five, five alone. Well five alone, we exceed the combined um, the combined permitted production permitted production volume. Per permitted production volume. Correct. And if we would stack these two on top of each other, we would be somewhere up here in some cases. So we pretty drastically exceeded the permitted production volume at yeah. times. But I don't think Supposedly. you've exceeded the permitted production volume for the year. So, so the, per, the permitted production volume and, and all that. Was my, that was my question to you. This is, so this is the 600 gallons a minute? If I'm yeah, because Jamie always said we have more production value in the bank. And we did our official right. recharge. Right. We're realizing we're, we're this technically is permitted for 870, but we're this is a million gallons per month. And his recommendations but I, I want, and I'm going to be off because I know I, I don't know the number but like 600 gallons a minute or something like that or, or five to five to 600 gallons a minute um, combined yeah, yeah and we have historically when we have run those we've gone on the higher end but we've also relaxed them when we didn't need them so when we needed the water we, we would run for what they're permanent for the yeah. 870 and then shut them down for months of the time when right you know off a peak it would be relaxed yeah that was the closer. idea I, I believe uh, there was I've, I've heard three different numbers for wells four and five uh you know 425 420 gallons a minute as the sustainable capacity that you could pump them round the clock all year long and then 625 gallons per minute as a peaking thing that could be used through the summer and then 870 gallons a minute is the actual amount the maximum amount that you can get from those wells that you could use for some period of time you could pump it at any of those rates as long as you don't exceed the x amount of million gallons per year permitted production volume so you can so it's so it's can, it's okay to do this you couldn't you couldn't be doing this and then have you know all the time up here yeah. but it's okay to be exceeding it every now and then because you're not exceeding the total permitted production volume of the aquifer for the year so the median spacing needs to be lower than the yes permitted volume. it's a good thing we're not in massachusetts <laughs> because they don't let that you do that fly. you know and <laughs> it's i've seen in, in new hampshire i remember times where they wouldn't let us put in a pump bigger than the permitted production volume and that that yeah 
the attitude about that seems to have shifted in the last 10 years. So if they'll let you do that, but you do, then you've got to be submitting your monthly operating reports. And if you were showing that you were submitting, you know, getting more than that, then that would be an issue. But did these give you sort of what you were um, what you were looking for? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you? Um, I assume this is probably on your um, your um, website or on the portal. Uh, yeah, on the portal. Uh, if it's not, you want to put this. You know. Yeah, just because it ended up on eight and a half by eleven and. Oh. Can't read. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right, one, and one of our comments to the to the to the young engineer we had setting up was, I can't read any of this. Can you make the font bigger? And she made the, she could make the y axis bigger, but she couldn't make the x axis because then it wouldn't fit. Right. All right. I think I need to excuse myself at this point for prior engagement and. Um, I've gotten to everything that I had. If, if the board is all okay. set yep. with me, I will I leave at the say, same time. It sounds like the meeting's going to end anyway. But. Yeah, Joe, if you want to take over and, and close the meeting out, um, you can do that. If you're leaving now, then you can close it now too. But um, I definitely got to run now. So. I will uh, relinquish the chair to the vice chair, Joe Comer, at this point at 6.45. All right. Thanks, guys. You want to do the quick thing on the private well hookup? It's, it's really, yeah, like, really not okay. a whole lot there. Um, uh, wire Road and Jason Drive are just about done for the. Uh, Thank you, Mike. For the private Thanks, well hookups, they're, they're out there doing the decommissioning of some of the private wells now. Um, Knollwood and. Um, Ridgewood. Thank you. I don't know why I have a problem with that. I want to <laughs> every time. Uh, Ridgewood. They're working on the cleanup now. It, it's actually just about cleaned up. Um, they're going to do, I say they, uh, CSSI needs to cut and cap the two inch that was feeding the couple houses on Knollwood, and then they can clean up Joppa Road area, and then shortly after that, um, the contractor should come in uh, and do services. It's a separate contract from CSSI. And I plan, on, I believe they're going to go after that. They're going to skip back. Connie's uh, CSSI will skip back to Wire Road and do our portion. Um, that hasn't been done yet. That's, they're waiting on getting the rest of it done. Okay. Not complete. But they're moving along. It's a little bit short. Thank you. I think they're doing a wonderful job. I think it looked that, uh, a very nice job. looks very nice out there. Yeah. Actually, got a new road out of it. Yeah. yeah. Polite guys, nice, yep. great work. So you're connected now? Not yet. Not yet. So. Was there any legend in front of your house? Mm -hmm. Was there a legend in front of your house? Yeah. There was. Of course there was. <laughs> yeah, up there there was plenty of ledge. Yeah, yeah it was all ledge. You want to do the minutes or should we wait until? The next meeting. I told her I'm going to send her some of my edits so she can maybe take care of it until the next meeting. I have a couple too. So okay. It's up to you. You want to just let her know what they are and bring it back next week? Works for me. Okay. Speeds it up. Old business. New business. I have uh, new business. You do? And that's the groundbreaking ceremony. That's right. So for four and five, um, the discussion was, uh, outside of this meeting, um, the discussion was four and breaking ground on four and five, which pretty much happens right now, end of the month, right, it said, um, which might be a little bit too short notice to, do, to get something done, but it's the first tangible um, move towards remediation of, of this PFAS situation. And uh, a couple of people feel that's worth celebrating. Um, now again, it's a little bit tight to do that, um, possibly for the end of August, 
when the actual ground breaking is happening. So we might need to find, you know, like laying foundation or whatnot, whatever it might be. You might need to find another mm -hmm. opportunity f to do that other than ground breaking. But um, I think uh, a couple people feel that it's worthwhile to make the public known that something's happening here, something tangible. And one of the discussions was, uh, when do we do that? What is the opportunity? Who's going to be there? Who's going to be invited? Can we put it in, uh, into right around when, when they uh, put up a sign for the project? The project sign the, for the funds. The, the, you know, the, the I'm going to say the wrong one for the trust funds. There, there'll be a sign like we've done in the past for the SRF funding. Same words, you know, this project spot, you know, is a trust fund project type of thing. Yeah, it, it, maybe we gear it towards that going in. And when is that planned to happen? I don't know. I can find. I can fi definitely find that out. So I mean, we we just cut uh, the vote for the funds. So there's another whole process, and I can actually go through that. I think I just gave you the form, right, the sheet tonight. Mm -hmm. So to look at that, but. Um, I can definitely. So follow usually, up on that. usually is this happening early in the construction phase? Later, I would think it'd be pretty pretty soon here. Right, because one of the ideas was to wait until it's actually finished, right? But that's sometime yet. So we can do that as well. <laughs> I think it would be or, well. I'm yeah. one of the people that think it would be nice to to do it sooner than that. You know, yeah, the, no, next, no, well, the next couple of weeks or a month, right? <laughs> like an open. Both. Right. Yeah, right. It would be both. Well, Steve Larson's waiting for a party. He's probably listening anyway. I promised him an MVD party, but, but uh, yeah. So. A good day. Well, do you want to find out what? I will. I'll definitely. When this takes yes. place, and then uh, maybe we can talk offline who, who we feel is yeah. suitable to be invited. And then. Uh, Aaron Holmes is the one. Uh, she's with the. Uh, Drinking water, uh, state revolving fund. The, the, uh, she's a, who we went through on, you know, putting all of the, the, the forms in and all of that. And she was wondering if she could use MVD as a case study. And she's presenting. Actually, know, her emails here. She's presenting at uh, a conference for New, uh, New Hampshire Waste. Uh, in containment sites conference in September, and she was wondering if she, again, she could use MBD as a, uh, as kind of like a case study or a project and talk about us and use some of the slides that we presented when we were applying for the, the funding. I didn't know if the board. Isn't it public record? It, yeah. I just wanted to bring it to the board. Just There's to, not, no copyright by Underwood on it? I don't believe so, and I think they'd be fine with it as well. Oh, okay. I can certainly run it by them. Sure. Okay. Another one is, uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if you saw the email, is um, viewer statistics. I did. I made a note of that, and I, and I haven't had a chance to. Of course not. Yeah. I was just submitted today, but I would like to see that maybe looked at. You know, do we have access to viewer statistics for you know, the townhallstreaming.com, for Channel 20? Um, I've asked the same thing, and I don't recall what the, if there is, but I can, I'll can. i certainly find out. I, that was like one of the first things I wrote down for notes when I saw your e email. Okay, and the third one, certainly for the, for the next meeting, is uh, to talk about um, the ownership of the uh, site contamination investigations for what's happening in Amherst and so on. You know, we the again, they, sim they right they similar to the discussion the earlier. Order. Similar to the discussion earlier today. Um, I don't necessarily feel that we're in the driver's seat, and we don't, I'm not sure who is in the driver's seat of this investigation. Um, DS may or may not be, and we heard kind of that they might might not be because some of the reports, the latest report, the, the newest reports are two years old, right, is what we heard. Um, so we, we got to have a better understanding who's in the driver's seat. Do we need to actually consider taking that on inside of the MVD, or are we hiring somebody that does it on behalf of the MVD? But, um, and I think that was one of the things we were going to kind of talk to Penacek about as well, maybe right. doing something jointly. 
Right, so I think for the next meeting we need to talk about, again, ownership and, and, and drive of, of, of site investigations of, of polluters other than what we know. Superintendent's report. All right, all set. Questions from the public? Questions from the press? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Three zip.